Hello everybody and welcome back to Milkweeds and Roses. It's a beautiful summer day. I hope for the same in your corner of the world, wherever you are. I have a couple of garden tasks to do today and I invite you to join me. Uh, but before we get started, take a look at Tess of the Dobervilles blooming behind me. She's a beaut. Ugh, wow. The roses are in bloom. Uh, there are hostas looking excellent. You know, this is the time of year when you discover that some of the things you've got going on might require a couple of garden edits. Am I right? I mean, maybe something that you planted this year isn't really taking off, needs to be moved, might need more moisture, might need more sun or less. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In fact, in my West Garden, over by the, I call, I call it the waterfall, but our water feature, uh, I have made some edits to the Mrs. Robert Bryden, the two clematis that are not climbing clematis, they're sort of sprawling clematis. Remember that from a previous video. But uh, what I have done though, because I noticed some slug damage on them, so I went ahead and got a trellis and tied them up. In the process, I have hidden the everlasting hydrangea the uh, hydrangea macrophylla, which was behind it. It's a small, it's a miniature hydrangea. This would be the first year that it would bloom. The problem is nobody's gonna see it. It's hiding behind that trellis and those thriving clematis. So I'm gonna give her a move. And you know what, she might actually enjoy it. So in her place, I'm just gonna swap out a daylily that I think is struggling a bit because it might be a little too moist where it is. Again, it's, it gets some splash zone there from the uh, water feature in our backyard. So knowing that daylilies can grow just about anywhere so long as they have sun, but hydrangeas need more water, I think this will be a good garden edit. So also in the North Garden, there were a couple of things we're going to do. Um, plant sale at Lowe's, so picked up a couple of things. So let's get to work and I invite you along. Here we go. By the way, the first thing I have to do is probably change. <laughs> get into some, some gardening gear. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but it's a super humid day. So I just wanna see what's possible. And after all, it's all about being comfortable. This is not glamor gardening, okay? with the uh, full makeup and outfits and the whole thing. Uh, but I am gonna change for gardening purposes and um, I'll meet you back at the end. <laughs> Here we go. To begin with the planters uh, that I planted up earlier are starting to fill in. They're starting to look good. Uh, let me get out of the, get my shadow out of the way. This was a large frost-free container that I have down here which I previously had roses in last year. Now I'm just putting some annuals in there. Um, the hardy glads are starting to come up, which of course, after those flower in the fall, I lift and dry those bulbs and do store those. A tip I always keep so I can keep track of some of these things, because trust me, I will not remember, is once I plant these, I tuck the tags into just inside the rim of the pot so I know what exact varieties they are, so that if I like something or don't like something, then I can repeat that, or better yet, don't. So, solar tower, sweet potato vine. So this is the kind that, in addition to just the sprawling, which will happen, it will also climb, which I think was kind of neat. Uh, wave petunias, I don't grow a lot of these, frankly, but um, I thought I would give these a try. Uh, this is kind of kind of a neat one. Easy wave red dotted throughout here. And easy wave red, sweetheart Susie Storm. And I think that's the majority of it. The Adam Glads, of course, I've got. And again, same thing, easy wave. And this is kind of fun this year. New for me anyway. Golf Beauty, it is called. So I thought that was kind of neat. Here's the tag. Again, these were just um, some plants that were on sale, Crespedia. So 
the majority of these are just things that are obviously they're just annuals, but it adds added some little touch of whimsy and some movement in this container, which does feel kind of heavy and dark. It needs something bright, something light. And I'm also trying to keep the um, color consistency here to keep the eye moving around the garden. So I do have some red, which is a pop. Um, I have some red, happy Diana. I have a red rose up here getting ready to, it's budded up. She's getting ready for her first year of flower, which would be, again, a beautiful pop of red once that comes. Some blue up against the fence. Another clematis. Uh, the pot, which is just starting to take off, it has the uh, yard art in it. And this will be a giant Bayesian canna, which will have some, it'll reach almost to the top of that, um, you know, three foot yard art. In fact, it should surpass it by the time the end of fall happens. And it's got some brilliant colors of reds, um, some hot pink. It'll be, you know, super sweet. Um, in the back of the fence there, I have Major Wheeler Honeysuckle, which again, I don't expect him to bloom for three years. This is just his second year, but at least he's filling up the trellis. I'm gonna hide that ugly box back there. That's the main thing. Um, the Columbine, the giant Cardinal Columbine has bloomed. I'm leaving the seed heads on for a bit. I would love for it to be seed some pastas, which tend to get fried by the end of the year. I've moved most of them out of there. I have an agastache in the very back, if you can see it. Bees love that. So gorgeous. And also, I have some uh, spiderwort, which is blooming. The blooms close up in the evening, but during the day, they are just calling out for the pollinators. Now I have also, this is Mrs. Mrs. Robert Bryden. And remember earlier videos where I said I'd like to have, I have two of them planted here and I like them to sprawl over the little stone wall. The problem is there, she's so vigorous that she's mostly just hanging on the ground. And I noticed some slug damage also. So I decided to get a little trellis. I just got from, um, I think it was Plow and Hearth, put that together wound her around there because this is the type of clematis that is not a climbing clematis, it's a sprawling clematis. So I've put her in there and she'll have pretty blue flowers, uh, usually July, August. But what I, what you can't see back there in front of the pig on the uh, Bose speaker, the outdoor speaker, is the hydrangea, which I planted last year. So she's gonna have to be moved it was fine in the early spring before the clematis came up and they don't need a lot of sun anyway, but I mean to have, to have a little bit more and have some moisture. What I thought is I would swap the hydrangea around the corner for this daylily. Now this was here when I moved in. It's again, pardon the shadow. It's just a bright yellow. So I figure, you know, I could swap them out or again, move the daylily to a different spot, put the hydrangea here. It's a, it's a petite version, it doesn't get very big. So I thought she might like that there. It gets some good morning sun, a lot of moisture. I thought that might, that might actually work. So I, I kind of hate to move this while she's getting ready to flower, but I know these daylilies, they've been around for 20 years. They're really hardy. Oh, Bruce next door is saying hello. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, I think this might be the day to do it. We've got enough time. She might not even notice that I've transplanted her. Um, and I do care a little bit more about the hydrangea that I put in right now than even the daylilies. I'm going to take care of them, don't worry, but um, that's kind of what we've got. Otherwise, we have some summer vacation going on for my, here we go. Now, this is a, it's a tender plant, and it can't stay outside, obviously. It's a jade plant but it really, it like doubles in size every year after I bring it out. It likes the light, it likes the humidity, and it's just hard to capture indoors. This is another annual 
planter, which really I should roll it into the sun here so you can really get a better look at the colors because I think it's beautiful. Which again, trick number one, put your heavy planters on rolling casters. It gets them some lift so they get some air at the bottom and uh, then you can move them around to follow the sun if you need to, which is great for tomatoes and you know other produce you're growing. But um, yeah, it's it's just a little bit easier this way. And we don't have a large space, so it kind of gets them out of the way if they need to. Um, this is a multicolor. Isn't this pretty? I thought this was something different. I kind of like it. And again, I'm, I've tucked the tags in. Uh, hopefully, maybe not. Uh, I've got another uh, wave petunia in there. This is a black and blue, black and bloom salvia, uh, dark stems, bright blue calyxes, and it is not hardy in zone 5B. Again, that was on sale uh, at my local Lowe's store. And I thought, well, let's give it a try. Okay, we have some other plants. My tomatoes are taking off, which is kind of nice. Especially this one, my grape tomato. We have oh, fruits, we have some fruits starting to form. Da da, lovely. Last year I had a grape tomato, indeterminate like this one, uh, planted in my rose garden. And I kind of learned a lesson on that one because they're a beast. Uh, they, I just don't have the room. I wish I had a garden room, but, um, and I do believe in cottage gardening, which is a mix of food crops along with ornamental crops. Um, keeps the uh, pollinators coming. I think it's healthier for the plant as well as for your soil, as well as for the food you're growing. Um, but I'm new to food growing, so I didn't realize how much they took over the space. Uh, and then when a horn worm showed up, I'm like, ew, okay, kind of gross. So I'm just moving them or planting them in containers. This one is from Garden Supply online. Um, it's got a basin in the bottom that holds the moisture and a drain hole down here in case it gets overly um, wet. We've had a lot of rain, which helps. And I think I have a, ooh, I have a bloom on blue light clematis. Can you see it? Oh, isn't she pretty? Look, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous on my North Arbor. Love that, oh, so pretty. And of course, Tengutica is blooming. Uh, the flowers are a little more subtle. The plants are floriferous, but um, yeah, so there you go. Now here is the other plant that I need to put in. It's very dry, as you can see, even though it rained last night. Um, she needs to be in the ground. It's root bound. Um, it is dry, drier than it likes to be. So I wanna find a place to put it. Um, I also got this echinacea, which love it. And I'm happy to see that the rabbit did not go after it overnight. So this one is Double Scoop Watermelon Deluxe Echinacea. Man, look at the color on that. Okay. I planted some larkspur in here that I grew from seed um, down in here, which is finally starting to take off. But I've got the Dirt Gertrude Jekyll Rose. This is her first year starting to bud up. So she's looking good along with some Veronia, Veronica. Um, and you can see what the rabbits are going after. Oh, and are going after my fern. So I just have to keep spraying. So this side of the garden gets tons of shade because of the, the house mostly and tons of moisture. This side still pretty moist, but blazing sun from about, you know, 11 o'clock onwards. As soon as the sun clears my big ash tree up front, then then it's hello sunshine. So echinacea will like that. Black and blue salvia will like that. I wanna keep a consistent color going here to help the eye follow around. So I thought that coneflower, I'm sorry, echinacea, will be nice to pick up the heady pink bloom from Night Owl. Isn't she beautiful? You can see why the pollinators love her. Not a lot of scent on Night Owl, of course, but the bloom is spectacular. 
not real floriferous, but again, I think it's just a little too moist in here is kind of the problem. My swamp milkweed, which I put in this year, continues to bloom. Again, remember every part of this plant is poisonous, so don't think you can pluck a flower and put it on a decorative thing for a cupcake because, whoop, not good. I have the purple wands now blooming and my agastache. Ah, oh, this thing will be a beast once it goes. And it, it just, I tell you what, it'll be awesome. Um, I have some, I lost the tag, of course, so I will figure it out once she blooms, but I have a clematis sprawling her way through there. And what I'm hoping is that she'll grow through here and help to hold this agastache up because it tends to get big and flop. So if she can weave in there and have nature be the wires that keep it upright, I think that would be awesome. Another possibility for the echinacea and the blue salvia, it doesn't look nice. Don't you just love the foliage? Even after the bloom, this pink dot pulmonaria is just beautiful. Along with the victory hosta, yes, nice. And this is where the baby bunny was hanging out. And also where our nesting birds were harvesting slugs. Oh yeah, we, ouch. I, I'm surprised that the bunnies would try this. This might also be um, some hail damage because these are hairy and spiky. If you actually touch the foliage here without gloves of the, of the also known as lungwort, but um, yeah not exactly edible. Now this is probably slug damage in here because this is planted a little tight, which probably isn't good, sorry, probably isn't good hygiene for the plants. But I wanted it full to thwart the weeds and uh, that's what we've got. The seven sunflower. is taking off. Now I'm gonna prune that one to a tree form because they, they tend to grow, they grow fast and they'll grow like a bush. Um, but do I have a poppy blooming? Oh, let's get up there. Is that a poppy? Oh my gosh. Is this a poppy starting to bloom? No, wait, is it? I have never, this is the first time I've grown poppies. Oh, they're so pretty. I should say thank you to Michael. I believe these are his poppies, Michael and Katie. The fam from California sent me some seeds. Love it, so gorgeous. And I'm just gonna let them self-seed. See, look at all the little buds. There's little, do you see it? There's little buds, little buds. Awesome, awesome. I'm so excited. And it's nice to look out the window and see this color here. So, and to see the rabbits working on it. But you know, they'll leave the poppies alone. They leave Penstemon alone. Obviously had to fence these guys. Oh, and uh, check out the hibiscus. Hello, mama. Finally coming back to life. Must be growing an inch a day. Craziness. There's a swamp milkweed, or yes, growing in here, which will be a lovely delight for the butterflies. Um, we do have a uh, salvia coming back up, which I love that. Nice, another stilby, I believe that's Montgomery. And different varieties of hostas in here. The blue one is known as being more slug repellent. And can you see it is getting a little flower spire ready to come up, which some people trim the flowers off of those, but you know what, the hummingbirds love it. Now these strappy looking leaves here are from the camassias that were in earlier, so. Oh, there's our friend. There's our friend. This is why I call this the Bruce Garden. <laughs> the Bruce Garden. Bruce is awesome. You always know what's going on in the neighborhood. And hey, as someone with a Chihuahua, trust me, I totally get it. I have some stock growing, which I did see a baby bunny nibbling on that but it, I keep it trimmed down and it'll reflush until it gets to be too hot, but it likes the moisture. See, it's got new buds ready to come up. So there's different colors here. Likes the sun and moisture. 
another transplanted daylily, a, well, geez, how rude. Rabbit didn't even bother to leave me a thank you note. Um, rhythm, uh, rhythm and Blues, uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears, Daylily right here. So I'm hoping it'll be a nice pop of red and the hibiscus is a cherry red with a white B center. So I'm hoping that will be a nice little continuation of the color. The cardinal flower, which is rabbit repellent, will be tall with a red bloom. We have the summer, summerific cookies and cream hibiscus, which I did have to cage up because when they're young and tender, it's like ringing the dinner bell for the rabbits. So I'm caging it up to begin with. And this is one from the discount haul from Lowe's. Nice plant here. Which would be, um, that, wouldn't that be great if it gets the beautiful color flash? It still be. If it gets that beautiful tall pink spires of color. Which again, tall pink, hot pink, purple, red. You know, keeping the continuation going up here of that color. And I have read uh, that hummingbirds like the color red. So I guess that's why I've kind of hit on that quite a bit. Okay, I think after looking around and placing these in different spots, I think what I'm going to do is I like this echinacea here inside the fence because I have a lot of blue, especially when this um, agastache takes off. Uh, I have a lot of blue and purple here. I don't have, I don't have a lot of pink. I have the night owl and I don't know, I think that's why I need this inside here. Meanwhile, the black and blue salvia, as you saw there, um, I have a lot of pink and red on the other side of the fence, but I don't have a lot of blue. So as a nice contrast, I'm gonna put that in the Bruce garden uh, and I'm gonna put the echinacea here. Okay, let's get to work. So put the tag in, water it, and we're good to go. At least that's one job done. Okay, and I think this spot right here will be good for the black and blue. Now I know this is, at least in my zone, uh, just an annual. But there is a nice little space right in here, which gets plenty of sun. Let me slip it in, Let's see how that goes. Alright, see look how root bound it was here. Let's tease it out just a bit, nothing too big. Not a lot of moisture in this spot here, so. Part of why it was so dry is the planting medium they put it in, plus also it was so root bound. And I think it's really going to take off. And these will bloom all the ways up until frost. It will get significantly bigger. And there she is. Do you see her, ladies and gentlemen? My little garden friend. Put your nibbling on there, princess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is, she hopped right past this. She went right by it. So, you see the things that she walked right past. So, I mean, I guess that's a good sign. Put here, I put it here at the front convince her that this is not, in fact, her buffet. Okay, let's put the asilbe in right here. So we get this nice swoop of color, and I think it'll echo the red of the hibiscus when it blooms.
Okay, I think that looks good right there. These are some nice tall pink spires. And we've got the annual, the blue salvia up on the hill. I think that'll be nice. So, filling in, color's looking good. Rabbit's in here somewhere. <laughs> unless she's gone in the fence so and i did uh, spray the cone flower just in case because hey that's just the way we roll here all right so okay that's what we have so far here on milkweeds and roses thank you for joining me i do hope you subscribe to the channel leave your comments tell me how things are growing in your corner of the world i hope you're finding beauty as well as well as some time to make a couple garden edits um, if needed am i right hey it's always a little tweak here a little tweak there keeps us busy it's great exercise and we're out in nature just appreciating all the beauty that's great thanks for joining me and i'll see you next time here on milk weeds and roses have a great day is it all gone i think it's all gone I think it's all gone. All gone. All gone, Gibby. All gone. All gone, my love. All gone? All gone. What do you think? Is it gone? I think it's gone. I do. I think it's gone. Okay. <laughs>